Well, hello everyone. I want to welcome you to my second video on this channel. Today we're going to draw something that I oftentimes would draw in my high school art class. And it kind of combines geometric shapes with one of my passions in life, which is severe weather, and lightning, and electricity, and science. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and draw a simple, um, just like a little cube. Not quite a cube, but uh, more of a, um, a box, okay? So there's uh, maybe the left side of the box. And now I'm just going to come up here. And it's just going to be at an angle. And all these lines here are, you want them to be completely parallel with one another. So for example, the side closest to you and the side closest to me, we want these to be straight. So it doesn't really matter if you do that or if you don't. It's just kind of how I like to do it. So now we're going to... I kind of mess. I'm not really happy about the way I started that. We're going to work on the base now, okay? So I'm going to pull this out here. Yeah, that's all right. It doesn't look perfect, but... All right. So there we have kind of the box. And of course, these... Um, the bottom and the far side there is not visible because of the way it's oriented. So after I got to this point, what I would like to do in high school was start drawing little lightning bolts coming out of this cube. Perhaps it was uh, charged up and uh, perhaps there was another, you know, object over here that it could release that electricity. So we're going to just start off here with uh, a very strong bolt and just... Uh, I just kind of would do this, you know, nothing really planned. And then the further I get, I'm just easing up on the, on the pencil. So now it's kind of fades into nothing. And that's kind of the main stroke there. From there, I would find these little appendages, these little loops, and I would do basically the same thing. So. Maybe it goes over here a little bit. And the same as we did with the starting one, we just fade it out into nothing like that. And we'll do the same right close to the cube here. See that? And the more little appendages that you draw off of these, to a certain degree, uh, it looks more complex and it looks more interesting. And the general rule that I would always like to follow when I when I would draw electricity is the farther that you get away from the origin point, the more delicate you want to be on the pencil. So I wouldn't want to start here very harshly. I want to kind of match the the texture and pressure of my surrounding appendages. See that? So I'm just kind of go over here a little bit. This space in here is kind of in need, I think, of a, of a uh, an arm of electricity. Over there, there we go. Now, something that I always enjoyed doing was I liked to blend the where the electricity is emerging from the side of the cube. I always like to try to make that as seamless as I could. So I'm actually going to go over this just a couple times, but not too far. We don't want to lessen the credibility of this being a real lightning bolt by, you know, messing up the, the initial path. All right. So I'm going to come over here and just, just stop about there just so I can establish how much power there is right there. You see that? So the next thing that I really like to do, as I was mentioning 
a little bit earlier was I'd like to just blend this in. And we can achieve this by laying down, oh, not really much of a, I wouldn't call it a shade, but just a little layer there. Equal layer, I'm not worried about my my point of light, where the light is coming from at this, at this juncture. But I am conscious of having this shade pretty much even through and throughout, okay? So now I'm just gonna throw down a little bit more pressure here, and I want that origin point to be seamless amongst that side of the cube, you see that? So I'm going harder here and then backing off. When I get close, I'm going a little harder there and then I'm backing off again. See that? Yeah, and then just maybe fan that out a little bit there, like that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then a little bit harder there. There we go. And it's a lot easier. I did this a little bit on the small side, unfortunately. But if you are wanting to do this, I recommend making it at least double that size there. It'll just look better and be, be a lot easier to achieve this. Now, after, after I have this cube, plotted out, I sometimes would like to go back and just, with the eraser, just just kind of knock off that far edge there. It's a little too harsh. So just, that was more so to establish the cube. So now I'll come back and just, just very lightly touch it, you know? That might be a little too heavy to be honest, but for the sake of this video, we'll just let that be and call it good. So I'm still becoming a little more aggressive here in this area. And as you can notice now where that branch comes out of the side of the cube, it's starting to be hard to distinguish where that is, and that's exactly what I want. See that? There we go. step is going to be to create another lightning bolt. So I'm going to have it come out of here from the top. I want this to be a strong one too, okay? I want it to be strong, but I don't want it to be that long. So we'll just taper it out right there. And now we have some beautiful points to where we can start pulling some more arms out. There's another one there. Lightning is, is fractals. And there are so many examples of fractals in nature, like trees, the veins in our eyes, the veins in our bodies for that matter. Fractals are everywhere. And they're beautiful. If I'm not mistaken, the definition of a fractal is an arm that comes out and it branches off into a smaller piece and keeps getting smaller and smaller. And what we did with this, we're gonna do the same exact thing with this one here. This one will be a little more challenging just because it's a little closer to that edge there, which we may or may not work on like we did this edge here. So I'm gonna lay down um, just a little, a little surface of shading there. It just makes it easier to blend this branch into the side there. Now, something I am definitely not in favor of right now is how harsh this back line is right there. So what we're gonna do is do what we just did a few minutes ago. We're just gonna come through with our eraser and just knock that off a little bit. And then now we're gonna, we're gonna pull it back with our shading. So in other words, that line will come back. But we're just gonna let this layer, the 
find that line. We're going to stop there. That's pretty, that's, that's better. That's better. Now at some point we are going to have to decide where our, our light is coming from. And that will determine how we shade the rest of this cube. But now we can kind of start to blend that in a little bit there. So it comes over here a little bit, up there. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. The pencil I'm using is a um, it's a Type 2 pencil. I believe Type 2 pencils have um, a bit better um, graphite at the tip to work with on these types of things. But if you really wanted to be fancy about it, which I'm not by any means, I'm not uh, claiming to be a good uh, artist and, and, and as far as sketching, but uh, charcoal would be an excellent medium to do something like this. So as you can see, we have uh, another branch coming out there, and I think we'll do one more. And I kind of want this one to come straight towards us, okay? And perspective can be very difficult, uh, especially with lightning. So a longer stroke here would indicate the lightning is kind of going to the side now we want it to be coming up straight more towards us like this, like this coming out. So to do that, I'm gonna try to keep the stroke from the beginning. I wanna kinda of keep it fairly short. See that? It's sideways like that. And then we'll kinda of just ease it back immediately. Because if you look at something look at something like this, this pencil on its side, it looks long, but when you you turn it up like that, it gets short because it's coming out at you and you lose that perspective of it being longer. But now just because the main stroke came out at you, it doesn't mean that the branches are going to follow this one. The branches might come, you know, out, out the side a little bit and, and even appear to be longer than the main branch, which they may or might not be. See that? And because we're looking at it straight down, think of looking at a tree. If, if you were to fly above a tree and look straight down on it, it would open up like that. And the same thing can, can, be, the, can be said for, for lightning. So we might even have a piece, if we're looking straight down on this thing, it might be, it might be coming over here. See that? I'll let it go over there. And this, this piece might be coming off here a little bit too. A little short one that comes over here. And then now we're going to start blending this back in to the base. But we're just going to lay down a little bit of shading here before we do that. I used to be so into drawing in middle school especially. And I wish I never stopped. And this is actually kind of the first time I've gotten back into it since at least high school. And I do miss it and I wanna I wanna do more of it. I think I will. But uh yeah, leave a comment and tell me guys and tell me uh, what you guys think. If you enjoy this type of stuff. So now we can just start to fade that in. And maybe it was so powerful that the base is very wide. Because remember, we're looking straight down on this. I'm just going to continue that a little bit and maybe give it one more branch. So we get that perspective of it coming straight at us. See that? There. Lastly, um, I, uh, I think I'd like to um, kind of make the light be coming from this angle over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade the lower left edge of this. And I want it to be kind of harsh here. 
going into the other side there. Actually, in reality, this whole part over here would be very dark. So. This is kind of the extent of my, my sketching. Like I said, I was never a, an amazing artist by, by any means. But I do find that when I do these types of things, it helps my mind address other things in my life that, uh, that need addressing. For example, my thing is uh, is video, and, and I, I make videos, and I I enjoy making films. So if I'm doing this kind of stuff and I'm drawing, it helps me to not necessarily think about the drawing I'm doing, but it allows me to think about the other tasks I need to do without them being overwhelming. If I sit in a chair and I tell myself. I'm going to sit here and, and plan my next shot for this film I'm working on or plan this video script. You know, so I, when you put that kind of pressure on yourself, some people are good at that, at being able to just sit down and say, I'm going to do this, but I don't work that way. I kind of need something else in front of me to do, uh, to distract my mind so that my mind can work how it works indirectly. So. This is a great way to just think, put some music on. Yeah, when it's raining, this is, this is the absolute best drawing, creating. I used to love drawing things when it was raining. My brother and I used to do it a lot. I think we had a little joke, even we'd say it's raining, we have to sketch, you know. So. Not entirely, you know, what I wanted here with this particular drawing, but you kind of get the idea. I'll have to see if I can dig through my um, my high school sketchbook and see if I can't find some to show you guys. Because I used to be better. I used to, well, maybe more practiced would be their correct phraseology. But there you go. Well. Uh, I'm about to call this good, I think. I wouldn't mind having a couple more little branches come out here. Do one there and there. But yeah, lightning is pretty straightforward to draw. I'm gonna flip this over and before I go. Um, I'll show you another thing that you can do with lightning. We'll, uh, we'll just have an origin point similar to what we just did. We, we won't worry about having a uh, necessarily a, a geometric solid, but I just do want to have one. That was horrible, but we'll go with it. Um, I No, I, I actually can't, I can't let that be. That's just not good enough. So I'm just going to slip this over here. Use the back side of this paper that we just you can kind of see it, but we'll make it work. So, you know, we'll have our of this there. There's a big surface there, we'll have no problem pulling a big bolt of lightning out of this. Just make sure it's in frame, and it is. So, here's our origin point. Lightning is just it's jerking the hand, the fingers. Mostly when you sketch, you're told by your art teacher, or I was anyway, that you don't want a death grip. 
when you're when you're sketching you want to you know a firm grip and you get more control that way but with lightning if you really squeeze that pencil it just makes it look so realistic and then we'll just a little loop there and just fade it off and see that how you just you're going from pressure downward and just easing up the pressure I'm not easing up how hard I'm squeezing on the pencil by any means but I am easing up how hard I'm pressing downward so see that and ease it out notice again I am matching my surroundings I'm not going as hard here as I was here I'm matching that segment there that looks pretty good and out we go so as we did on the other side I am going to retrace my path a little bit here just to make it more solid but theoretically the more times you go over the first stroke the less jagged it is and it becomes more like a river than lightning so with that being said, you know, be, be, be conscious of that. So now I want to just lay down a shade here. And this will be, I can already tell this is going to be a much better example of, um, of fading it in. And uh, my battery on the camera, unfortunately, guys, is, is about to die. So that's probably going to be it for this video. But there will be plenty more. But please let me know what you thought of it. Now we can see that's blended in much better. We just want a seamless transition. Shading was never really my strength. I mean, I could do it, but drawing people was always particularly hard because if you look at a face in real life, there aren't defined lines like you see the edge of this there aren't it's all shading and once you understand that you'll do much better there we go so you can see that lightning bolt is coming out and you can't even really tell it's just you know just coming out there is no jagged point like that you know not like that it's just faded and i always enjoy doing that yeah boy this is fun I miss it put the screen away for <laughs> for 30 minutes a day put the phone down that's what I need to do Life's too fast-paced. I watched some videos of myself and my brother the other day from 20 years ago. and Life was just more simple, of course, because we were kids, but it was also better because we weren't inundated with screens. I'm very happy and fortunate to have grown up in a time where, you know, self smartphones and screens were not a thing, with the exception of an unlit Game Boy <laughs> Game Boy Color now and then with no backlight. Well, I think that's all we all we have as far as time, guys. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, let me know what you thought in the comment section. If you want to see more of this, let me know. Appreciate it. I'll sign it. Actually, we'll sign the other one because it was a little more complete. And there it is. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.